Okay, I'm just going to show you a couple of synth sounds that you can make using Logic's built-in synthesizers. So the first one I'm going to do is using the ES2, and it's going to be a white noise riser effect. So the sort of sound effect that you have never to be heard in 90% of dance tracks since the 90s. Um, it's a commonly used trick to kind of give rises between sections and kind of define where parts of your track are and it's super easy sound to make. So what we're gonna do, loads up for ES2, and the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna reset everything. So I've got this user default setting here. Um, all this is, is just sine wave from oscillator one, all the modulation turns off. So it's kind of our sine start. And what I'm gonna do for our rise is turn off oscillator one, and just use oscillator three, as it has a white noise option. And I'm just going to pull our blend all the way to oscillator free. All we're using is noise, so it's completely unpitched white noise. So what I'm going to do is put some movement into the sound. What I want to happen is my filter, turn that one on, it's going to be set to a low pass, and I want the sound to do this over time to give us that build-up effect. Now, I can't click with my mouse throughout the whole song. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pull the cutoff back a little bit. And in my router here, I'm gonna go for cutoff one as my target. So this top box here, that's gonna be mapped to that. And my source, I'm gonna use an envelope. I'm just gonna use envelope one as we're not using it for anything else. I'm gonna pull the modulation amount up and give that a listen. So at the moment the attack is way too short. I need to pull that up. You can start to hear it doing that rising effect. If I pull the attack all the way up, you get that classic house white noise rise. So you could leave it there. The really cool thing about the sound though is you can personalize it a little bit more so you can take this basic settings and just add a few things, tweak a few things to make it your own. One thing I always like to do with a sound like this is add a bit of chorus. So your ES2 has a built-in chorus for engine phase effects. It's default to the chorus. If you pull this intensity up, you get a bit of movement in the sound. Which is quite nice. The other thing we can do, again, if you want to kind of take it a little bit further, is put some more modulation routing on this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my amp, so the volume, and my source is going to be LFO. Pull this one up. And you get that kind of chopping in and out effect. Now, LFO1 is here, so I can change the rate. Make it slow or a lot quicker. If I don't want as much of that, I can pull the modulation down. For my second sound, I'm going to be using Retro Synth, and we're going to stick with this sort of house theme and I'm gonna create a sort of a, a causal patch similar to the likes of Disclosure, um, sort of house chords. So when you start a retro synth, you get this screen. Now it's laid out in a quite a different way to say the ES2, but a lot of the controls are still the same, at least in this analog mode. It's still a subtractive synthesizer. Retro synth does have a few different modes, which change the characteristics. We've got FM, wavetable, but I'm gonna stick with analog. That's what we need for this sound. So my oscillators are here. I have two, oscillator one, oscillator two. And I can switch between the shapes. So we've got noise, we've got this little square wave at the top and we can shorten it, make it into a pulse. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that for my first Oscillator. I'm just going to put this halfway between the square and the pulse to get a bit of a blend. 
hear the tone changing. All that sort of hollow sounds. That's what I'm going to do with the oscillators for now. I'm going to move on to my filter. So it's automatically set up to a low pass. If you did want to change that, you can click here. But I'm going to leave it as low pass. And I'm just going to knock the cuts off back a bit. A quite a muted sound to start with. But I'm going to add a bit of resonance. So that just adds a little peak to where the sound cuts off. Get that kind of squelchy sound that we're going for. Okay, the real key to this sound is again to control the movement of the cutoff. And the way it works in RetroSynth is you have LFO, a filter envelope down the bottom. And you control the amount of LFO or filter envelope on the sound with these dials here. I'm going to leave the LFO off and just use the filter envelope is here and I'm just going to pull my attack up a little bit to get a bit of a movement in the sound. What I really want to do is this. So I'm going to have a bit of a attack to get that kind of vowel-like effect. I'm going to pull the sustain all the way down and then just use the decay to control the speed. I want quite a snappy sound. Do you want more or less envelope? Just here. So right at the top it's very scratchy. Right, so you pull it back a bit. Get more what I'm going for for this sound. Similar to the white noise, you can then personalise this a bit further. I'm going to use chorus effects again. Pull the mix up a bit. So that's our basic sound. What I'm going to do now though, is actually use my MIDI effects. And I'm going to pick a chord trigger. The reason for this is just to make one key play a sort of extended chord and just get that real kind of um, housey kind of sounds. As if you sample a chord off a record or sample one chord off a synth and pitch it on and up and down on your sampler. You can experiment with the voicings. I quite like anything that's like a minor, ninth, seventh. These work seems to work quite well, but try a few of them. using alchemy now so when you load up alchemy it gives you a raft of presets that you can play around with on the browser screen but in order to make your own sounds we need to move over to the advanced view and the first thing we need to do is go to file and then initialize preset and what that will give you is just a blank saw wave with none of the filters or kind of envelope changing going on that the presets have. So just as soon as you open up Alchemy, flick over to advanced and just clear the preset or initialize it. And what I'm going to use this for is to make it a sort of a, a Moog base, so a kind of classic funk kind of base patch. So way Alchemy works with oscillators, you have four up here, A, B, C, and D. And you can turn them on or off as you please. If you want to change the waveform, click on the waveform name, and then you can go to load VA, virtual analog, 
you've got basic for your soul sign square and triangle as well as some of the more complex interesting and kind of messy waves um, various pole shapes various swords there's a real raft of uh, options here you definitely can't run out once you quickly swap between you can just use the arrow key for this sound it's quite simple bass sound so i'm just going to use the saw wave just on oscillator a and i'm going to tune it down an octave to get a bassy kind of feel now i want this to be quite a quick sound so i don't want our long kind of release and sustain so much so your envelope in here it says A H D S R, so attack, hold, the case, the same release, and it defaults to the one that controls the shape of the sound, so the amp envelope. And you can click and move this, or you can use the dials. I want quite a quick sound, so I'm going to pull the attack down and pull the release down. something like that so I have the sustain on that but it's not holding for too long after you take your finger off okay key to the sound is the use of the filter so filter is up top here and you can switch in between various choices I'm going to use a low pass so LP filter for this one and I'm just going to pull our cuts off back to get rid of some of that high end. And I'm also going to add in some resonance. So key to making this work is the movement of this cut off. What I want it to do really is get that kind of sharp sound. And to add modulation, we need to control click on the parameter we want to affect. So I'm going to control click on this cutoff, add modulation, and I've got all these options here. I'm going to use an envelope, so again, a HDSR, and I don't want to use envelope one because we're already using that for the shape of the sound. So I'm actually going to add a new envelope. Straight away, that brings us up this second envelope on screen. If I want to get back to the first, I can cycle back with this left arrow, use right, and it will go to the second envelope. It also opens up this modulation window. Now, if that ever disappears, just click on the controller that you are modulating. So in this case, cut off, and you'll see it will cycle back to it. So I've got my filter one cut off controlled by AHDSR2. So envelope two controlling my cut off. The depth is how much I want it to use. So I want quite a bit on this. You hear the sound changing. You see this little orange bar appearing. That is the sort of max and min points of this modulation. And then all I need to do is change my envelope shape in order to get the sound of cut off modulation that I want. So you can experiment with this. But what I really want is sort of a kind of square shape. What's going to make the most difference here is the decay. There we go. So I'm going to have no sustain, touch release, which uses decay to time it. I just 
prompt that little kind of squirrel she sounds at the start. Put my cut off up a bit. Make it more noticeable. So in the right kind of ballpark there. Okay, the last thing I need to do with this sound is change the voicing. So I don't need want to play chords on this. I want it to be a kind of authentic, um, sort of mini mode bass sound. So I want it to be monophonic. So in my voice section here, I've got number of notes. And at the moment it's not eight, which means I can play eight notes at once before the next note takes over. Now I've kind of got this glide between the notes now, so you can hear that they blend into each other. That's quite a cool effect, but if you don't want that, just change it from always to re-trigger. If it's on always, you will get that legato. If it's on re-trigger, the kind of oscillator starts again every time you hit a key. Every time I press a note, it re-triggers the whole process. So you get that squirrelly sound before everything. And then it's just fine tuning from there. So what you want. Okay, for my last sound I'm going to make in this video, I'm going back to the ES2 and I'm going to make a sidechain pad sound. So it's going to be a big chordal sound that you can really use to kind of fill out the background of like a dance track. So I've got my ES2, I'm going to go to my default setting. So this is just my sine wave, like a sine start, use default, whatever you've called it on yours. Just sine wave with no modulation. None of the filters set up, just a blank starting point. And for this sound, I'm going to be using a saw wave. And I'm actually going to use three saw waves. Keep them blend in the middle. But to differentiate them, I'm going to detune them from each other slowly. So my oscillator number two, I'm going to pull up a few cents. You know, somewhere between sort of five and seven is perfect. Oscillator three, do the opposite. If you're going up seven on one, go down seven on the other. If you're going up three on one, go down three on the other. The farther away you go from zero, the bigger the sound gets, but be careful not to make it too, uh, too over the top or it kind of gets a bit discordant. Other things to be careful of when using this, make sure you use the sense control to detune it and not the semitones, or I can get, again, some very weird things happening with the transposition. So I've got a nice big wide sound now. What I'm going to do, move over to my filter, engage it, and just knock a bit of that high end off with the cut off. Touch your resonance and colour. I'm starting to get that big pad sound. Moving over to my envelope, so envelope 3 is the one we want for this, because that controls the shape of the oscillators. I'm going to pull the attack up a notch, get a bit of a fade in. I'm going to pull the release up a bit too. Just extend all of these to get a nice long sound. That kind of blends into each other. And that is the basis of this sound already sorted. So quick and easy program. In order to get a bit of movement into the sound, so using this sidechain part, I'm actually going to need to set up a kick drum, which is going to act as the trigger for my sidechain. So I've just gone to Ultra B and picked the basic kind of kick sound here. Um, nothing fancy, just a default patch. And I've put a kick on every single beat of the bar. What I want to happen is, in my ES2, I want to affect the volume of this by using the kick as a trigger. So to do that, top right, it says sidechain. I'm going to pick instrument, kick. 
So it's now tied this, the output from the kick drum, to the input of my synthesizer. At the moment, it's not controlling anything. I need to tell Logic what I want it to do. So I'm going to go to my router and I'm going to pick the amplitude, so the volume. My source, instead of using like an LF or an envelope like we've done previously, I'm going to use this sidechain input. And then I'm going to use the modulation dial to decide which direction I want it to go in and how much of the effects I want. I'm just going to play a few chords and give it a listen. side chain pumping effects it's quite a subtle effect on this so to enhance it even more I'm going to set up a second routing and this time I'm going to go to cut off and that will be my target and my source again will be side chain let's hear how this sounds And by using both of these, you get that kind of classic sidechain pumping sounds. And it's just a really nice part to fill out the background of a track.